we're at the Transformative Vertical Flight Conference 2020. Daryl here is looking at a very interesting challenge, and that is the vertiport. Yes. First, why don't you tell us a little bit about what a vertiport is, and we'll have a conversation about how okay. it's going to change everything. Right. Okay. So the vertiport is the infrastructure that allows uh, EV tall uh, or what people are calling flying taxis uh, to access uh, the, the ground infrastructure. So it's about what does a vertiport look like? How does it operate? Where do you put them in connection with uh, local, uh, local public transportation uh, infrastructure? So it's what does it look like? Because we need the vertiport infrastructure to develop a healthy uh, EV tall uh, commercial aviation system. Now, your background, I want to talk to that for a moment because I think it plays into the following questions, but you come from an airport planning background, yes. right? Yeah, so I started planning uh, airports about 20-some-odd uh, years ago. I went to the UK, did a master's degree, uh, started working for a consulting engineering firm, planning and designing airports, uh, ran an airport uh, in Africa, uh, and then I started uh, doing a lot of uh, airport acquisition due diligence, so basically helping people buy airports, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, and then I did an MBA, started looking at uh, projects to do. So my project was looking at buying HSM Arc Royal, uh, which is an aircraft carrier in the UK, floating at south of London City Airport, and turning it into a heliport. But that's when I ran across the issue of noise. And Londoners don't like helicopters because they're very noisy and there's very little social utility. And the social utility is about noise and about their ability to access the service that they provide. Um, so that really took me into it. Uh, and then it was the uh, publication of the Uber uh, Elevate paper that really got me back into vertical flight. Uh, and I had the ability to access the economics of, of aviation and route, uh, route economics, so I decided to test uh, Uber. Um, and my conclusion was, yes, there's a market for it. However, it's not necessarily what Uber thinks it's going to be, or at least from a European context. So Uber, uh, Elevate, yes, US, maybe not necessarily in Europe and, and the other parts of the world. So that's really brought me into this infrastructure piece for uh, electric aviation. Well, and you look at it kind of from this airport background and the things like the throughput, the number of passengers yes. and how it's going to interact with other systems, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, vertiports are going to be very different from uh, the operation of airports because it's about the high volume of vehicles but low passenger numbers uh, and passengers you don't want to spend a lot of time uh, in a, a particular vertiport because uh, the promise of eVTOL is about getting people to where they want to go faster with less uh, interaction at the infrastructure. So airports um, are often seen as a necessary evil uh, in that you have to use an airport to get there, but airport operators have all these processes that you have to go through, security and customs, immigration, and then of course all they want to do is try and remove money from your pockets in the commercial opportunities, but that pays for the infrastructure and airports are huge things. Whereas the inverse, because of electric aviation, the economics are upside down in that we can have smaller verti ports uh, with less dwell time so people are actually getting to where they want to go uh, with less interference uh, at the verti port. So what does that infrastructure solution look like? And you showed me an example of something yes. like three acres and was it 4.8 million passengers per year or something? Yeah, so, so the concept that I'm presenting here uh, is a, a vertiport uh, concept for uh, London uh, based near uh, Waterloo Station. It's just a concept, uh, but I worked with Pascal and Watson, uh, noted uh, aviation architects uh, and AIQ consulting, uh, again, uh, consultants in, in the industry. Uh, and we looked at what a vertiport solution would look like. So we, we found a site and we came up with uh, two landing pads, 10 stands for operations, uh, and we think that we can get about 4.8 million passengers per annum. But to be able to do that, we have to demonstrate to local authorities that we're not driving people onto single-user taxi journeys, so we have to use a public transportation system. Vertiports have to complement uh, public transportation. They can't compete with it because local authorities will say, no, that's, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to drive people into, into cars. We want to get them onto public transportation or micro-mobility solutions. And this is where we're talking about mobility as a service. And we have to bring that into the, the type of system planning that we're doing. So do you envision kind of an um, end-to-end type ticket then as far as uh, you know, where you want to go to your home? Yeah, no, I, I think that's going to be the natural conclusion. So this is when I'm talking about mobility as a service. In the future, we'll consume uh, transportation through an app uh, on our phone, uh, kind of like we do with Spotify. And you, you 
listen to whatever music you want within their database, but you don't actually own the music. Uh, so in this case, uh, you have an app, so Google already do this type of service where you say, I want to get from here to here, uh, and it will tell you you can either fly or you can take public transport or you can take a, you can take a walk or bike. Um, so it's about that as a service, so it's mobility as a service. And the idea is that this uh, EV toll flights, uh, electric aviation, will just be uh, another component, another layer that will add on to that. So you will just literally say, this is the trip that I want to do. It will offer you the solution. You say, okay, that's it. It's booked. And then you're on your way. And on your way might be to a rural area. You were talking about how you mapped out all of England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, part of the exercise when I'm trying to validate what Uber was saying is I, I looked at what the infrastructure uh, component looks like. Uh, in the UK, I've identified potentially 970 operating locations. Now, of course, that's a combination of, of existing airfields or gliding uh, facilities or helicopter facilities, and they won't all be suitable. But it, it says that that uh, there is the potential for that kind of thing. And every country that I looked at, there is that kind of potential. There, there's masses of, of small general aviation airfields uh, that would be perfectly suited for this type of operation, but also the fixed-wing electric uh, aircraft operation. So there's a theory that I'm talking about, distributed aviation, which is the connection between eVTOL type operations and fixed-wing electric aircraft and, and how the system is going to evolve that way. So yeah, there's lots of potential uh, out there, lots of existing infrastructure, so we don't need to necessarily build new infrastructure. We can use what we have. So you mentioned a, a kind of a back to the future moment in the sense that regional airports could kind of rise up again. Oh, I, absolutely. And I, that, that's what uh, distributed aviation is to me. So because we're going through a paradigm shift in the economics of electric propulsion systems in that they're, they're cheaper uh, to, to build, maintain and operate, the economics are, are going to drive the cost of the tickets down to the point where you'll be able to travel from a, a local Verdi port or a local airfield uh, across to um, what, where, whatever your destination is. Because in the end, there are more small airfields that are closer to passengers' origins and destinations than there are large airfields or large airports with great surface access. So there's going to be a natural connection between fixed-wing electric aircraft operations at airports, regional airports, and Verdi ports, which are uh, possibly located just outside of city centres to offer that last-mile connection um, over those five to 900-mile uh, journey. So it's going to be really interesting times over the next few years. And from a land use perspective, uh, I could imagine all kinds of interesting new communities sprouting up because of this. Well, absolutely. So uh, late last year, I spoke at the uh, uh, Berkeley uh, Sustainable Aviation uh, Symposium. Uh, and there are communities out there that are actually trying to incorporate this type of infrastructure in the early days of planning. Uh, there is examples in the Middle East where they were starting to build communities which are, are based around uh, driverless communities, uh, so no vehicles in the community whatsoever, but you still need to be able to access them. So again, this type of infrastructure uh, and the, the eVTOL operations can provide that type of connectivity. So it's lots of opportunities there. You're a member of uh, CAMI and we'll talk uh, to one of the CAMI uh, uh, directors later yeah. but the question I want to ask you in that regard is from a planning and permitting perspective what needs to be done in terms of working with local officials? Well this is where I'm really excited about CAMI so I'm, I'm a, an advisor to CAMI I'm helping them with uh, what they're trying to do working on the infrastructure side uh, but the role of CAMI is, is really about interfacing with local authorities and local communities so trying to act as that impartial organization uh, so that um, local authorities, local uh, communities can understand the benefits of electric aviation uh, so that we can mitigate the, the negative aspects that might come out of it. So noise is going to be a very important issue that we need to address. So people need to understand noise because noise is the lowest common denominator. We can all hear stuff. But if we can help people understand what the noise impact is going to be on them personally, then we start to get over this, this challenge. Uh, most airports have a, a noise challenge uh, issue, so we need to address that early. Uh, and the other side is the social utility that you get out of uh, electric aviation. So in the early days, it is going to be expensive, but that's no different from the evolution of, of commercial aviation in general. Uh, as you get more vehicles and more infrastructure, uh, more operators, the price uh, drops. So we're going to see the development of uh, electric low-cost carriers, ELCCs. So it's going to be a race to the bottom in terms of the price. So as you get more competition, the price comes down. So this is where an organization like CAMI can come in and help be that interface between uh, the, the wider public uh, and the aviation industry to, to help facilitate that. 
Well, excellent, Daryl, and you're obviously a big contributor to that effort, so I yeah, appreciate thank, thank your you time and education here. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers.